This episode of Six Five Guys is brought to you by Benchmark Barrels, world class accuracy. Defiance Machine, defying tradition with innovation. JC Steel Targets, the industry leader in quality AR500 steel targets. Hi, and welcome to Six Five Guys. I'm Ed Mobley. And I'm Steve Lawrence. Ed, for as long as I've known you, and we've been shooting together for a number of years, you've often obsessed over, in a good way, your technique around prone shooting. You've always asked, am I straight behind the rifle? And you've always tried doing something a little bit different, trying to dial it in, not quite satisfied with your performance in prone. Earlier this year, when we went to New Mexico, you had shared with me with great excitement about kind of our recent discovery. Maybe you can share that with us. Yeah, and you know what what it came down to is you know I'd, I'd go to a class or or seminar or whatever, and you know I tended to be angled off behind the rifle, kind of like a sling shooter, because that's how I started and when I started shooting at, at a young age, I used a sling. And mm -hmm. so when I got into this tactical rifle game, well, I just got rid of the sling, put a bipod on the rifle and just- Did the same thing. Yeah, I did the same thing. Yeah. And it, it worked, but I kept hearing, well, you know, you really need to get straight back behind the rifle. And so of course, you know, they'd say get back behind the rifle. And of course my groups would just Open up. They, um, well, it's <laughs> scattergun is is more like it. But I'm like, you know, there are a lot of good shooters who can shoot straight back behind the rifle. And even when I, even though my groups weren't what I wanted them to be, I could just see that the recoil impulse was just straight back and it would come right back on the target. Mm -hmm. So but that's not what you were experiencing. Well, the recoil impulse. Okay. Even even before I I, I kind of figured some things out. What I guess what I'm saying is what caused me to you know over years try to figure this out is i knew that being straight back behind the rifle is a better way to manage recoil yeah but if i had to trade off between recoil management and accuracy of course you know i would go with accuracy it's like well how do i get both accuracy and good recoil management mm -hmm. and and so it was prior to our our trip to new mexico where i was like all right i don't want to go to another class again and they're going to tell me the same thing and then it's just it's just not going to be pleasant yeah so what i decided to do and we've we've got some b-roll here to to kind of illustrate uh the points but bottom line is is it just involved lowering the cheek piece all right so what i'm illustrating here is how i would normally get behind the rifle you can see i'm angled off quite a bit and you can see that my cheek piece is really high to the point that I had to get extra high studs for that uh, Terry Cross cheek piece. But again, this is how I, I essentially used to shoot with a, a sling and just got rid of the sling and put a bag underneath. So then when I would get straight behind the rifle, I noticed that I couldn't see through the scope. And I had to, to crane my neck so that I could see through the scope. And as a result, I was muscling the rifle and it made it very difficult to do dot drills or, or to pan. And so you can see right here, I'm, I'm really having to, to muscle myself. I, I would really hike up on that right elbow. And just generally uncomfortable. And in general, you can see right there, if I release my elbow, I just, I just fall down. So this is clearly not a neutral position. So what I did is I said, all right, I'm going to remove this cheek piece and see if I can see, you know, get straight behind the rifle and see through the scope. And here I am hey, I, I can see straight through the, the scope. It's, it's almost like a revelation. So it's like, all right, I need to get that cheek piece back on there, but not have it 
nearly as high. So here I am putting the, uh, the cheek piece uh, back on. You can see it's a lot lower than it was earlier in this video. And I'm still fine-tuning the height. But you can see that it is definitely significantly lower. And then I also found that uh, a change-up of bags uh, would, would help because when you're straight behind the rifle, it was more difficult for me to, to kind of hug uh, the bag. And also the, the cheek piece, as I'm pointing out there, is at a lower point of my face. But the, the important thing is that it's a very neutral position. I can raise my elbows. So I'm not hiking myself up, and that makes a more repeatable position. You know, I don't have it totally parallel to my spine like some of the folks do, but it's a lot straighter than I was. And here I'm, I'm showing that as it recoils, it just recoils straight back. And that helps it come right back on target. It also helps me that when I was shooting kneeling, instead of having to cant the rifle as I did in the past, I can keep the rifle straight up and down. And then also in offhand, it did the same thing. Instead of having to really crane uh, my neck down, I'm, I'm starting to illustrate it here, I really no, no longer had to, to crane my neck down. So not only did it help me in prone, but it helped me in kneeling and offhand. Okay, folks, so um, hopefully that was helpful. Had a lot of uh, B-roll. Uh, thanks, uh, Steve, for being uh, patient <laughs> as you uh, sort of went uh, on my OCD journey there. Uh, I mean, we've been shooting together for a number of years. I mean, what were just some of the things that, that you had, had noticed you know, there was this before and after. And... Well, you know, what's interesting, what I found interesting is I know oftentimes you had kind of, what I'd call it obsessed, um, and who doesn't, right, around trying to get better, around prone in particular. And I didn't quite really understand the details of, of what you were struggling with. So I think, um, you know, it's great that you found, finally fa struck upon, you know, what works for you, one of the key changes being kind of the, the comb height and being able to get back behind the rifle. So I think, um, to me, what I take away is, you know, if there's those things that are really sort of the thorn in your side that are just, you're struggling with time and time again, don't give up, right? Um, there's probably something that you need, that the shooter needs to find that uh, will be the breakthrough, right? That kind of takes them to that next level. Yeah, and I think sometimes you got to find the root cause because for me it was like, okay, I couldn't get behind that scope without, again, just kind of mm -hmm. propping myself up as, as we talked about earlier. And so I just completely removed the cheek piece and I saw, okay, yeah, it is physically possible to look straight straight through that scope. And, and you know, that was just a whole paradigm shift for me. And of course, you know, I wish... I had figured that out three years ago. I would, have, I would have saved myself. But you know what? That that's part of the journey, and you know we're we're sharing it uh, with you. And so I've been uh, shooting like this now for a few months, and it's it's almost like a, still kind of being a bit of a new mm -hmm. shooter. I'm still trying to get just that ideal cheek piece height. So there's still a little bit of uh, yeah tweaking. And, here you know, and there. the other thing I, I think is interesting though is because we have. Um, well, actually, last year we had shot 308 mm -hmm. in match competition. Uh, we both have been shooting a lot of 308, and you really have to be on your game in terms of recoil management to get back on target. So I think for folks that may be shooting, you know, lighter recoiling caliber quite a bit, it may be masking some of these things that oh yeah, some, yeah. some of the fundamentals of marksmanship that um, you can kind of let slide because there's they're they're a lot more forgiving, right? If you're shooting a flat shooting caliber. Um, it's going to give you a bigger fudge factor to make mistakes. Ab absolutely, and you're absolutely right about the 308 because, especially being angled off behind the rifle, you, you in the case of a left-handed shooter, you just saw that re that that reticle go up and to the right, up and to the right, up and to the right, and then just to finally get behind a 308 and just have it go whoop, boop, and come right back on the target. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, even do some other things with it, like even slightly free recoil the rifle and, and just do things that, that weren't uh, possible. Angled off it, again, it just opened up a, a whole new uh, 
you know, way of thinking and, and as we discussed earlier, even lowering the cheek piece helped me in other positions. Now I did kind of change the, the placement on my face, but again, I, I think even if you've been shooting for a long time, sometimes you've just got to completely deconstruct your position. Mm. Just start from the beginning, blow it up if you're not satisfied with, with where you are. Yeah. Well, guys, hopefully you found this uh, tell of, uh, you know, learning interesting and informative. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up on YouTube and share it with your friends on social media. Remember, folks, life's an adventure. Stay on target.